Today, I'm gonna to show you how we built this beautiful custom vanity that you see here before you, complete with brass hardware. We even added some soft closed drawer slides. And we also ended up using a little tip out tray here for toothbrushes and toothpaste. We saved a lot of money along the way. We're gonna show you how we did it. Let's get started. We started off by using cabinet grade birch plywood. This particular plywood is pre-finished on one side and this dramatically speeds things up because there's no need to do any finishing inside the cabinet and it will make things extremely durable. A quick sidebar here, if you're looking for a great resource to help maximize your sheet goods, head over to opticutter.com and use their free cut list optimizer. You can enter in the different dimensions you need for each piece and even account for saw curve and grain direction. It will then spit out exactly how many sheets of plywood you need for your project. This is a huge time saver. Now the idea for this vanity is one that Jess had found on Home Depot's website. And while their version looked nice, the price ran about $900. And when I looked over the specifics, it was made from MDF. Now, I'm not an MDF hater by any means, but in my opinion, I've never liked the idea of MDF on cabinets that have the possibility of water exposure. So already we can see a benefit of building this ourselves. Now the construction of this cabinet is very simple. We use three quarter cabinet grade plywood. And like I mentioned before, it's pre-finished on one side, which I love for cabinet interiors. The two end panels will be the same size, so we make sure and cut both of those at the same time. The two inside dividers will also be the same size, so we do the same thing with that. For our joinery, we use pocket screws and glue. We started off by attaching the sides to the bottom of the cabinet and then we come up high enough for our toe kick. I've just clamped a couple of small spacer blocks in place to allow me to have a good measurement for that height off the bottom. Typically, this would be about three or four inches, but we're going a little higher because we're gonna trim out the toe kick a little different. So this is all gonna make a little more sense later on when we get there. Since this cabinet is fairly long, we need to add a middle support underneath. This is just another piece of plywood that we glue and pocket screw in place. After that, we flip it over and install a piece that will be the inside of the toe kick. This sits in about three and a half inches or so. Between the ends, we'll be adding two dividers. Now, these will be three quarters of an inch shallower than the sides to allow for us to add stretchers between the two end pieces on the back side. We'll also add and notch the dividers so that they can accept stretchers for the top. This Rockwell Blade Runner is a great tool for this job. It's essentially a jigsaw upside down on a table and it works great for things like this. Next up, we'll go ahead and put those center dividers now in place. If you notice on the top, I've gone ahead and I've put the stretchers in that are gonna be in there. But then also when I go to install these dividers, I'm actually just using pocket screws and I'm gonna hide them by putting them on the inside because the center of this cabinet actually is just gonna have drawers in there. So this will never be seen if we do it this way. And the stretchers on the top, I just attach them with pocket screws on the ends and then in the center, I'm just hitting them with a 15 gauge nailer here and these will be plenty strong enough when I do it this way. Also add a little bit of glue. Glue always adds a lot of good strength to it as well. So really quickly, I want to take a second and we're starting on this face frame. We started cutting these pieces out. Um, but I wanted to mention something when it comes to the edges, this is just a scrap piece here, but I just wanted to kind of show you um, that when you get ready to do this, you're better off to allow your edge to have a little bit of an overhang. That's just a smidge, it's not much, okay? You would much rather have that and have kind of this clean shadow line than you would accidentally make this a little bit too narrow. And now I can see the edge of the plywood. You don't want that. Um, you would much rather have a little bit of a shadow line. And it is gonna kind of depend on where you're putting it and what you're doing. But this is gonna look a lot cleaner. And even if you want this perfectly smooth, you still have the ability to go over it with a flush trim bit on a router and it will clean it up perfect. But if you mess it up and you go inside here just a smidge, it will never look right. Next up, we're gonna start working on the face frame. Now, I like to use pocket screws when I do this, uh, just like a lot of this cabinet has been so far. And one of the things I like to do too is I like to get my boys involved whenever I can and have them come out and help. And so drilling these uh, pocket screw holes is a really easy job that's kind of hard to mess up. And so it's a good way to get them involved and let them get out here and to kind of learn some things. And it's, you know, we're pretty intentional about doing this because we really feel like it's important that they know how to do some things when they get older. So then, does the glue hold it mainly or the screws? It's cut, so the, the screws kind of act like a clamp until the glue catches it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now the, the screws do a lot in this particular instance. 
because end grain, which is what this is here on this piece, mm -hmm. this is this is edge grain on this piece because we're we're attaching the edge. End grain's not very strong, so glue so screws are a really good way to do this. Now, as far as the construction of this face frame, it's made out of poplar and it's two inches wide. And uh, I like to use pocket screws and glue just because it makes a good strong joint. And the most important thing that you got to do though is getting the two pieces square and clamped down tight. I use Woodpecker's clamping squares for this and they work really good to help keep everything nice and square. We also add our drawer dividers. Instead of trying to measure it all out with a tape measure, I like to just use a spacer on each end. This ensures that each piece is perfectly spaced and square. After that, I attach the face frame using glue and an 18 gauge brad nailer. I take plenty of time to get everything square. Sometimes I shift the cabinet if I need to. I, again, we're just trying to get it square. And don't forget you can measure corner to corner at a diagonal to ensure that you've got it square. This is super important because, you know, once you get this face frame put in place and it's nailed down, you're pretty well committed. And so the last thing you want is to get done and then something's kind of cattywampus. So one thing that I didn't think about when it came to this was um, we're going to have a sink over here on this side. Um, this side is not. We're just doing one sink. Um, but when we had the granite guy come out and uh, do the measurements, they're going to go ahead and mount an undermount sink when they do the granite for the top. Um, something he mentioned was cutting out a space, making sure there's plenty of room in here for the sink. And I uh, ended up just having to go in here and I basically just jigsawed this piece out. Because if you remember, this actually went all the way across over to here. Same thing here on the front. So I just jigsawed that out and then just kind of took my multi-tool, had to kind of go in and cut the nails um, just to kind of get that out of the way so there was plenty of room. So that's something to think about if you're gonna do a sink is just making sure there's lots of room in there for that. Next, I start cutting the drawer box pieces on the table saw using my table saw sled. This is my favorite way to cut these to ensure that they're perfect. Little side note here, if you're looking for a time saver, you can actually purchase what is called drawer box material. It's already kind of pre-sized, usually four, six, eight inch widths. And it has, um, this particular one has a bullnose edge on it on the top here. So it's a little bit rounded, but also it is pre-finished on this top edge as well. Now, this is not for everybody, but if you don't like the look of that plywood on the top edge, you can also buy it that already has edge banding on the top. So uh, it's something to consider. It saves a lot of time, in my opinion. Uh, prices kind of vary on this, but um, in my opinion, you're, you're paying for time saved, and so it's kind of worth it, in my opinion. So something to consider when it comes to building drawer boxes. Assembly is, well, you guessed it, pocket screws and glue. I put three sides together and then slide the panel in. After that, I add the back of the drawer. The drawer back, it actually sits down on the drawer bottom rather than going ahead and putting it to where it's captive on all four sides. This allows me to never have to notch out for the undermount drawer slides that we'll add later. It's faster and it's easier and it never failed me yet. After that, I start working on the drawer fronts and the doors. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this because I've talked about building doors in more detail on other videos. I'll link it up if you need to check it out. Basically, it's two rails and two styles. They're made from poplar and they're assembled using tongue groove joinery with only glue holding them together. The center panel is MDF and that pretty much sums it up. When it comes to the drawer fronts, one thing that's a bit different than the doors is that they need to have a spacer put on the back side so that when you add the hardware for the drawer, it doesn't cause it to flex. You could also achieve this by using half inch MDF and then rabbiting the edge down to a quarter. Either way works fine. In this case, I just use a spacer and attach it with C8 glue. After that, we're just going to take them outside and we're going to slap a coat of primer and paint on them. I would say don't skip the primer. I know it's tempting sometimes to do this. I know that a lot of paints say that they have primer in them, but I would highly suggest going ahead and priming these. So a little tip here, when it comes to setting down your smaller parts, drawer fronts, doors, things like that, um, things like these project blocks here from Craig, they're super handy, but they do cost money. And so uh, if you want a way to do this without spending a lot of money, uh, a neat little tip here is to just take a piece of like plywood of some sort. This is a quarter inch plywood. And then I just drilled a bunch of drywall screws through it. These work perfectly fine to be able to set parts on. So super cheap, super easy. You don't have to spend a bunch of money on uh, either bench cookies or these project blocks if you don't have the money. Now I realize that this cabinet is now painted and uh, there was no footage 
of us painting the cabinet and that's because we didn't get any footage of painting the cabinet that I'm aware of. Jess actually painted this one day while I was at work and so it's painted and uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. She just rolled it and it's actually a Sherwin-Williams Woodland Lichen is the color uh, but it is a bare premium paint from Home Depot. They will actually match that. You can tell them a Sherwin-Williams paint like that and they will match it. So that's what we did. It's kind of becoming a recurring theme in our home. We've got it, we did it in our laundry room. We've done it on some other pieces in the house as well. We just really like this color. And then what I'm doing here is I'm actually just adding the drawer slides. Now I prefer undermount drawer slides. I like them, I have good luck with them. I don't really care for side mount drawer slides. I don't have good luck with them. Uh, honestly, I find that undermount are not that expensive. You can search around Woodworkers Express online has usually has good prices. Uh, I just really wouldn't go and purchase anything from Lowe's or Home Depot. Their prices are not great when it comes to these, but I'm just a big proponent. I also just really like the way that these look as well. We're also going to use the Bloom soft close door hinges on each side as well. I love these hinges. I have great luck with them and I've found honestly that I get them a lot of times anymore on Amazon and they're a decent price. This is a Bloom hinge jig that I'm using. This thing is fantastic. It's also really expensive. It's like 300 bucks. I highly recommend it, um, but again, it's, it's really expensive. I understand if it's not something that people typically want to buy, but I build a lot of doors and so I like it. It's very, very sturdy. Now one of the last parts of this build is actually trimming out the bottom. If you remember earlier, I said that I raised this up a little bit more than normal for a toe kick because of a trim that I was going to be putting on there. And what I'm doing is, is I'm jigsawing out a trim. This was an idea that Jess had. And like a lot of ideas that Jess has, they turn out great, but they're a little bit of a pain during the process. Again, like I said, this thing turns out fantastic and it does look really good. Uh, but this whole jigging it out process was a little bit tedious. And also, I'm very much a stickler for everything being perfect, and that just doesn't always seem to happen. And uh, this took a little bit of sanding afterward to get everything smoothed out and get everything square and nice and perfect, uh, because that's just kind of how I roll. Now, as far as assembling this thing together, all we do is we just end up putting some 23 gauge pin nails into it. And if you ever have to remove it, it'll be very easy, but I think it'll be plenty strong to stay on here for a long time. And it really just sets this thing off. I will give it to her. It looks really good. Next up, we'll add our drawer fronts. Now, I love these little clamps here. These are made specifically to help you to attach drawer fronts and allows you to be able to clamp everything in place and then get everything level and how you want it. And they work really, really well. I will link these up down below if you're interested because I'm telling you, it's like you got a third and a fourth hand when you're using these. Oh my god. <laughs> Another little thing that we wanted to add was this tip out tray that you can get from Reva Shelf. Now, typically you'll see these a lot of times in kitchens, but we thought, well, I mean, we could use the space and there's no reason for it not to be here. We've got one in our kitchen and we have great luck with it. We really like it. So let's stick one of these in the bathroom. We'll use it for toothbrushes and toothpaste and man it works out great uh, these things are not too terribly hard to put together they are a little weird and they take a little time but you can you can definitely install one and it's way easier to install it when you don't have a top on your countertop I put one in the kitchen and the, when the top was on and it was a little bit of a bear to do it kind of standing on your head so after we got all of that done, we put the hardware on, these brass finishes here turned out great. The last thing it was to do was to cap this thing off with this beautiful quartz countertop that you see here. We actually had a custom company come in and they did this and they built this for this particular space and this vanity. It was a little bit of an expense, about 600 bucks. That included the cutouts, that included the sink, also included installation. Now, when they did all of that, uh, they also noticed they came in beforehand and they used a laser and they shot this area here and they realized, hey, there's a bow in the back of this wall. So we're going to cut a bow in the back of your top. And so that's what they did. And when they brought it in and they installed it, they slid it up against the wall and it fit 
perfect. It was wonderful. So that was a huge benefit to using a company to do that. And we had saved enough with building all of this ourselves that we were okay with spending a little bit extra for this top. Uh, so that was kind of where we ended up going with that. And we really, really like that. I highly recommend that because had we not done something like that, there would have ended up being a pretty bad gap on each side. Cause honestly, it was about a quarter inch on each side, uh, had we not done that. So that's something to kind of consider as you're going forward, if you've got the budget to do that. Uh, other than that, we're going to link up the hardware. We'll link up the faucet. We'll link up tools. Any, anything else, though, that maybe we don't link up down in the description. If you've got a question, let us know down in the comments below. We'd be happy to answer them. Hopefully, this gives you a little bit of inspiration uh, to show you what can be done. And again, uh, if you've got any questions, just let us know. We'd be glad to help.